Now that we have our sides attached to our legs, what we can do is start dressing the corners. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to cover the corners with some corner trim. And the reason being is that if we look, you know, when we assembled our sides, we may not have gotten the tightest joints to begin with, but also there are some defects in the core of our plywood. So you can see here that there's a little bit of gap, um, and there's also a gap on this side. So what the trim is going to do is it's going to dress it up and it's going to make it look a little bit nicer and neater. So what we're going to do for that is you can go ahead and you can start figuring out which side is going to be your front. And this is actually going to be my back. And the reason being is that partly because I have these defects in the material here, so these knots, so it's not going to be as nice of a front. Um, my joints are on the back here. They're still decent, but they're not as nice as my miter joints up here. Also, you want to take into consideration when you actually look in the box. Okay, so when I look in the box, are there any defects that I don't want to see? On this side, you know, both sides here are about the same. I have these knots. You know, did I make any mistakes when I was attaching it? Does one uh, side look better than the other? So you want to kind of look to see where you can hide mistakes if you've made any. So like I said, this is going to be my front, and this is actually going to be my back. The reason why you want to locate which one's your front, which one's your back, is if you remember, we have that hinge trim that goes on. And that's going to go on after we have our corners. So we only need one set of hinge, uh, one piece of hinge trim because we only have one set of hinges. So that's only going to go on the back. So your hinge trim is only going to go on the back, and on all four corners is going to go in your corner trim. So if I spin this around to the back, what we can do is we can start marking out for our corners. In order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this corner trim here, and I'm going to make sure that my corner is cleaned off. I'll set this up here, make sure that it's nice and tight, okay. and then I'm actually going to mark it, looking down, and I'm going to mark it about, you know, a good sixteenth inch higher than the top of the board. What that will allow me to do is when I make my cut on the chop saw, it will allow me to take off of just a little bit more material because we want to make sure that our top of our hinge, or our corner trim, is flush with our actual corner. So I would take this, I'd go cut it on the chop saw, and what I, when I cut it, I want to cut it so that this would be the table and the fence would be back here. So basically I want to make it a teepee. So when the blade comes down, it's going to cut it right here and not like this. When it cuts like this, what ends up happening is we cut it in the past is that it'll actually blow out the side because there's not enough support. So again, you want to cut it this way. I've gone ahead and I've already cut a couple pieces of corner trim and you want to do this for each corner okay so you want to go ahead and you'd measure this corner mark it measure this corner mark it and cut it same thing with all four corners because if I made mistakes along the way or if it wasn't settled hasn't set down in the, the leg assemblies properly one corner may be just a little bit higher so again I want to make sure that my corner is down Thrusting against the edge of my leg, and then it's flush up top here. All we're going to do is just we're going to attach some nails uh, to attach this. And when we attach this, we will, again we want to make sure that it's flush up top here at the corner, and then we kind of want to cross tie them in a little bit. So we're going to shoot in three on each edge, so a total of six per corner. And when we go. Uh, we want to make sure that we try and avoid these nails so we don't end up uh, shooting a nail on top of one another. Otherwise, we might kind of get a kick out. Okay? So, again, I'm going to kind of cross tie these a little bit. The other thing that I want to mention is that when you're selecting your hinge trim, you want to make sure that your hinge trim isn't cracked at all. Okay? I was lucky enough that I saw this. It was a big enough crack that I saw it before I was. I'm uh, going to make this cut. This is going to be one of my other corners, but if you can see that this that's basically ripped the entire length, and when I would have um, nailed that in there, it would have like, likely would have split the whole way down, and then I would have had to pull that out and then get another piece. So this piece here is pretty much scrap. Okay? So, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach this, again, making sure it's flush, 
If I cut it just a little bit too short, what I can do is I can split that difference so that it's flush up top and then it's the gap is a little bit on the bottom too. So I don't want the whole gap at the bottom, you know, if this is an exaggeration, because then it doesn't look like I, you know, it's poor craftsmanship. So I want to make sure that it's flush and touching the bottom. If there's if it's not flush up top here, you know, split the difference a little bit. Okay? So all I'm going to do for that, is I'm going to attach this in here, making sure that I'm not too close to this edge so that it doesn't bust off the side. I really want to hit right in the middle of this trim. I'm going to go down at the bottom first. Too close to the ends either. You don't want to split it. Okay. And if you can see that my nails are actually sticking out a little bit, so again, I'm just going to go back. Tap them in so they're almost flush. And since this is our final trim, I'll do this side too. I don't want any hammer marks. So right now I can still feel them because they're still sticking out a little bit. So I'm just going to take this nail set. Rest it on the head of the nail and just tap this in. Until it's flush. So again, kind of one of that you want the when you know it's decent is when you can close your eyes and you can feel, rub your hand across it and not feel that it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and you do that for all the nails. What I would suggest is doing all your corners at once. So, you know, get all your corners ready, cut, you know, label them so you know which corner goes where. Then go, go ahead and nail all them in. Then come back last with a um, nail set and finish them all off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quick do this corner here. And then I'm going to show you how you can do your hinge trim. So again, cross tying so they're not one nail on top of each other. Trying to center it along that trim. Okay, so again, I've taken this, and I've got my hinge, my core trim, and this is my back. I've located that. And what I'm going to do is going to take this hinge trim here, and what I want it to do is I want it to fit tightly in between these two corner pieces. And when I when I attach this, I want to make sure that the top edge of this Trim, this hinge trim is flush with the top edge of my side. So I'm going to part, stick this in here, mark it again just a little bit long, about a 16 inch longer than it needs to be, so I can cut it um, down. And then when I attach it, I'm going to end up gluing it and then nailing it, putting five nails in and making sure that the nails are short enough so that they don't actually stick through the inside. Okay? So again, remember taking into account the thickness of our material, how thick our hinge trim is, so that we don't end up shooting through. And that's glued and nailed on. Okay? 